And in three, two, one. Got a very cool guest with me here with a cool, fun shirt on. Okay. I mean, they might be able to see it behind the, uh, Kenzie would know. Can they see it behind the mic? I mean, we could Almost. we could he put this, hold, hold it up for just a second. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we could He's got the Fuv Life uh, yeah. sweater on. This on? Yeah. <laughs> on the, you got a camera right, right here for you. Yeah, there's your camera. That, oh, that yeah. one, my bad. Yeah, there you go. Nice, nice. Fuv Life with Mark Fraunmeyer and Sandy Monroe, who uh, is tearing apart Arkhamotos and rebuilding them by the minute. Yeah. You can just toss up there or anywhere. But yeah, how goes it, man? You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, so uh, my name is Karthikei Agarwal. Um, I'm from uh, California. Uh, from the Bay Area, and uh, I go to school at UC Santa Cruz, and uh, yeah, I'm not really, I'm not entirely sure why I'm on this show, but you know. No one does. Uh, <laughs> I start inviting but, random people. Wait, so you're going to school in the Bay Area, you're just yeah. up here for like a summer kind of thing? Chilling. No, I, so I'm like going into my fourth year, and I can basically graduate in December. Ooh, wait, or really more. quick, you're going to yeah. want to have this thing like about a okay, like six right inch, yeah, and you can like really move it around. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, you're going to want to like pretty close. Just good? It. Yeah, cool. All right, cool, cool. All right, so, so it's your fourth year. Yeah, so I'm going to my fourth year. Um, uh, I can graduate in December. So my plan... Uh, With a degree in wedding planning or something? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I have a degree in... Uh, or hopefully economics. That's cool. the goal. Nice. Um, yeah, so... Uh, but the thing is, I can graduate early, and I really want to stay at Arkhamoto. Yeah. And I want to keep working here, so... And mining Ethereum. Yeah, and mining Ethereum. I mean, that's all going on in California, but... Um, Wait, so you had it going on, you just left it. Like, do you have a friend that you trust enough to be like, hey, don't rip me off. No, my parents run it. Oh, um, score. Yeah, they have, like, I have, like... Your convert- parents are into crypto? Yeah, they're... I've I mean, tried telling them so many times, like, just make it... Literally just make a cash app or a Coinbase account. Yeah. That's all. It, like, pays you to just learn about it a little bit, yeah. and you don't have to put in any money exactly. or anything. Exactly, like, and I... And they're like, nah, it's more confusing. I'm like, okay, I don't even know what to do with this There part. was a There was a coin uh, called Graph or something like that, mm-hmm. um, that it, it came out... Uh, they had, like, videos of it on Coinbase, and they paid you, like, $3 worth for yeah. every, like, one-minute video that you watched. And then if you wanted to, you could have just converted it to something else. Exactly. So, so. I'm like, it's an interesting thing. Yeah. How do you, do you pitch uh, Ethereum to people? Like, do you, do you try to shill it kind of like one of all those Twitter people? Or you no, just kinda, like, I just, I do it on my own. This is probably the first time I'm ever like publicly talking about it. Yeah. Um, like, obviously, like Matt knows about it. Like my, co- my friends and stuff. People, how, how are you existing without, like, without getting paid? Like, like how the, f- like, and you're like, crypto? It's funny because I made that up for a long time where I'm like, oh, I just bought Bitcoin like five or six years ago because I just didn't like explaining money to people. Yeah. And I'm like, it's such like this ethereal thing where you can just be like, ethereal. I literally just made money on crypto and yeah. nobody questions it. Whereas otherwise yeah. people are like, yeah, but how are you paying the bills? How are you doing this? And I'm yeah. like, in the end, you have a boomer aspect way of looking at money. You don't need as much as you think you do to survive. Exactly. It's like I'd rather just hang credit out. Credit is a very beautiful thing. If Credit's you know a how beautiful to use thing. It, if you know Holy how to use it correctly. Cow. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it all comes <laughs> into you into danger. The more I'm like looking at I'm like, yeah. do you have an Apple credit card or? Uh, I, I'm going to get one soon. Yeah. No, do you just take out money like staked against your Ethereum then? No. So, oh, you mean like how do I pay the bills? No, or like, like when you say crypto is awesome, like do you just, because a lot of people that are like friends that I have, someone bought a house just staking their Bitcoin for it. Oh, no. I mean, for me, like I just accumulate uh, Bitcoin or sorry, not Bitcoin, Ethereum. Yeah. Uh, and then I just, uh, there's a website called BlockFi. Cool. Um, they give like four and a half percent on Ethereum, which is really fucking good. Nice. Um, so I just keep it there. And then my mining account just, so there's like a, you have a pool obviously that your, your miners kind of mine to mm-hmm. and they send their shares there and then you get paid like a certain amount based on how much like mining power you have, like yeah. hash power, right? Yeah. So that, and then every, like once you hit a certain limit on your account, they'll just transfer it over to your cool. external wallet. So I just keep it there. It earns a ton of interest. Nice. That's like the and definition of an actual side hustle and yeah. or passive income. Most other people are like, yeah, I go to the dollar store and I buy like a hundred items and I take all the time to sell every single one of them. Like, that's not a passive income yeah. or a side okay. hustle. You're literally just working more with extra steps. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I respect the hustle though. Like I used to, I resold in high school, like not that stuff. I used to do sneakers and stuff like yeah. that. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's I totally respect the hustle. Like, if you go to a dollar store and you're able to make like twenty percent, totally thirty percent, twenty percent on a dollar. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter though. It's about yeah. volume. You can just you can start increasing that, and then once you make it more of like a full time thing, then now you can make a lot of money off of it. No, I had someone literally pitch me. They're like, "Hey, man, I just paid a down payment on a house," and he was like a friend I went to uh, high school with. And he's like, yeah. "I made it by buying toothpaste at the dollar store and selling it to people. Do you want to get in on this?" I'm like. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm good, man. That sounds like it would take up all my time. <laughs> like, yeah. I, like, like longer term, like ways of like, man, hopefully this will pan out someday, yeah. which sounds like you're doing with Arkhamoto. Like, so you would replace Doug Campoli someday then, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Doug Campoli nah, is the CFO Doug for Arkhamoto. Doug is a great guy. Doug is the coolest. Yeah. For a CFO, like the first time you ever, and I don't know if he wants to say this on air. He just like looked at me. He's like, I had a couple of wild experiences. And he just told me about like two or three tra- like Jeez. out of body experiences. I'm like, yeah, cool. Good stuff, man. Yeah. No, but I mean, what would get you into finance enough that you're like, I'm going to dedicate my whole life to essentially numbers and like spreadsheets? Because like I got into it for a while. You know who Martin Shkreli is? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah I watched all of his videos. And I started oh. making like discount cash flow sheets on like like all these or models on like all these companies. And then at a certain point, I'm like, I'm waking up at four or five a.m. to look at pre-market numbers. Yeah. What the fuck am I doing? <laughs> and then I was like, okay, I'm, I'm just going to get out of all of them. I sold Ethereum yeah. in 2018, which is heartbreaking. And I sold like all these different oh, things. Oh, trust me. I did the same. I can show you. I sold Ethereum for $200. Heartbreaking. A coin, and I paid more for it. At the, like it was Brutal. terrible. This was like before I understood the concept. Like I had the concept of long-term investing with like stocks and stuff. But with Ethereum, I didn't understand. Or with crypto in general, I didn't understand how it worked. Yeah. So you're uh, like a holder now? Yeah. So like and the, the way I got into it was someone had paid me in Bitcoin coin yeah. like uh 2015 for 20 nah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for what uh for sneakers oh, like okay. i i was reselling and then he paid me in bitcoin and then i did i immediately sold it but mm-hmm. like i kind of like learned about it at that point yeah and then i started buying a little more uh later this was during the run-up from 1000 to like 20,000 nice. 2017 i think yeah um so i was i got in that but again i didn't make a ton of money um because i didn't like time anything correctly <laughs> and in terms of time you have to build in the externality of how much time you have to explain uh, crypto to every single person you meet yeah. <laughs> like, i mean I'm like seriously i'm like oh someone who knows about crypto i'm gonna ask you a little bit yeah. i imagine so many people are like what is it so what's a hash so like like literally an infinite amount of questions yeah and that's kind of where my telling people like yeah i just bought bitcoin at some point broke down where people ask me to explain it i'm like Nah, <laughs> it's like, it's a lot to explain. There's a, a lot of information. I mean, I personally don't understand all of it. Oh, how um, can you? For me, it was just about the whole like business of mining and the fact that it became profitable. Yeah. Uh, now it's it pays my bills and it allows me to live in Eugene. Yeah, so that's like that awesome too. Charlie Munger quote. It's like uh, whose bread I eat, his song I sing. Where it's like wherever you're getting money from, it's like yeah. I praise it pretty decently. So it's like no. But speaking of, we're right next door to the person on your shirt, which is Mark Fraunmeyer. So yeah. you met. Mm, uh, Matt or you met Mark like what brought you what is it like 600 miles or something or like 300 miles up to Eugene to some random EV company like 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 did you know you're going to Arkhamoto when you came up here or you're like I'm gonna go to Eugene Oregon yeah so my dad actually discovered Arkhamoto last year this was uh around the time like you know when all the stocks kind of crashed in March he was like going through like these different stocks and then in the summer he brought up FEV like Arkhamoto and and then I started looking at it and I was like bro this is fucking weird yeah Uh, (laughs) like I I don't know like what's gonna happen with this and then I started researching it more and just like looking into the idea more and then I started watching Mark's YouTube videos like he had a bunch of podcasts on there uh he had a talk that he did at Berkeley at some point so I was just watching videos and just like it made more sense as I like totally like heard more about it uh back in like high school and a little bit of college I was like super materialistic um, uh, which is not surprising when you come out of sneaker reselling. And especially but, out of California. Yeah. Everyone I meet from California is I'm like, we're on a different wavelength. But you seem to like be kind of meshing with Oregon or maybe I'm starting to become California like. I think I'm I'm becoming more like towards Oregon. Nice. I just I I literally I've stopped wearing like expensive sneakers. I wear like vans every single day. I'm like literally uh, not even wearing shoes <laughs> for this show. I think my flip flops like five years old. At a certain point I'm like if I have to care about the shoes that I'm wearing getting dirty, like I'm owned to buy my sneakers, like the activities I do and stuff. Yeah. I'm sure you have pairs that you didn't care about that you'd wear hiking and stuff. Oh no. I mean, I didn't actually wear the shoes. That was also what? a problem. Like it, it was like, I was paying a lot of money for these shoes, yeah. right. To have them, but I just wasn't wearing them because it was this culture of like, Oh, you don't want to ruin your sneakers. Totally. And then now I don't care. Like I still have some of them at home. You have Yeezys? Yeah. I have like two pairs. Are you waiting for Donda to come out? I don't, I don't, like, I'm so out of that culture. Now. Oh, I thought you were going to say, yeah. even like Kanye, I was going to be like, the show's over. I mean, that's <laughs> rule number two. Number one, oh, it's a conversation on interview two. Don't say anything bad about Kanye. <laughs> no, it's I mean, the board. No, I, I, I love Kanye. Yeah, Kanye is awesome. Nice. Uh, 
they helped pay some of my bills back in high school. So. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Holy cow. I mean, it's unbelievable. Like, the Red October and stuff, it's like, yeah, they sell them, like, a month later, they're 40K. And it's like, not that they sell. That's the whole thing I don't understand about eBay. Everyone, like, takes those numbers of, like, what they're up for, the auction bid is. Yeah. And they like, see, like, this Beanie Baby or this shoe's going for, like, this much. And it's like, oh, but it didn't really sell for that much. It goes so many layers, and I stopped paying attention. I'm like, these people are weird. They pay attention to weird things. Yeah. But I've never actually gotten into it. Like, do shoes actually sell for, like, 10K? There are pairs that do sell for 10k. I've never like the highest I've sold a shoe for was 1300. Wow. Um, but that you bought I, for that I bought for 250. That's crazy. Yeah. These were the Yeezy. I think these were the V2 Zebras. Nice. Um, this was the original, like the first release. They had like 4,000 pairs worldwide. Wow. Or there was like some crazy rumor like that that came out. I don't know what was true and what wasn't. But when I went to like the local sneaker store. And I told them I had a pair. Mm-hmm. Um, they were like, "Oh, we'll offer you like thirteen hundred or something like that's that." Crazy. And I was just like, "Bro, like this is fucking." And again, so I was in high school, so totally. I'm like, "This is fucking awesome." I wonder what man. they resold it for. And that's what the local store did. So you, were you one of those people who like the second it was going to drop, you like refresh the website, buy it, like just before anyone else does? Um, pretty much, yeah. Like for that drop, I just I was just on the site and I was on like that easy like waiting page yeah. that they had. I, I think you probably remember this from 2018 if you like were trying to get them. But, yeah, I was just stuck on that waiting page, and it somehow went through, and it was like, oh, and I was just, like, it was in the background, right? Like, yep. I, had, I was watching, like, a YouTube video, and then I, like, switched screens, and it's just there, and it's like, do you want to add it to cart? Yeah. And I was just like, sure. And then I went through, and then I got it, and it was, yeah, that was awesome. Cool. I like it. So, and, and I may have interrupted you talking about Ethereum, but I'm like, hey, you want to introduce yourself? You said your name, and then you're like, Ethereum, is, is there anything else that you, like, wanted, like, that you're known by or, like, that you do in life aside from, uh nerdy uh, google sheet stuff or excel or whatever it is <laughs> um no nah, i mean not really i mean i have a motorcycle that's oh. kind of cool i uh, can get the two front wheels that the uh, oh, no. bought the patent fuck for no, no just because no. it's so expensive well not not because they like this cost it's more like i don't want that on my motorcycle like my motorcycle i want it to be a two-wheeler nice. um like i ride it's a track bike so yeah uh like i want to go fast on it like and I, I just, I think the three wheel option is cool. Like I definitely ride one of those mm-hmm. bikes, but I wouldn't put it on my own bike. That I've driven I rode a motorcycle once and I was yeah. tripping on acid and a friend who had like a <laughs> duo sport <laughs> was just on like a, like a, a small, like suburb street. He's yeah. like, you want to try it? And I almost tipped it over. And ever since then I'm like, I want it more stable. So as soon as I yeah. found the Arc Moto show, I'm like, that's nice. Yeah. Then people who are tripping can no longer tip it over. <laughs> like just kind of, cause they're heavy. As soon yeah. as like, it was, like getting on is fine. Go. Um, but then as soon as I stop, I'm like, oh, that's chill. And I just got off like a bicycle. I'm like big era. Oh, you mean on the two wheeler? Yeah. Or on the three wheeler? On or? a two wheeler. Three wheeler. Okay. I haven't had any problems. If anything, okay. I'm like, I'm not trying to tip a fub, but I want to yeah. see like, like I go a little bit fast and I like, go a little, like, lean yeah. into it. And I'm like, man, these things are like planted to the ground, which is when I talked to Mark, the episode that may come out, may not, I haven't put up my mind. The dog's barking the whole time. Yeah. Um, I asked him like, is the first question people ask you like, how easy is it to tip one of these? Cause the three wheelers where it's one in the front, two in the back, they're known for tipping. Like I'm pretty sure they're illegal to even sell or like a lot of these things anymore. So I'm like, it seems like that'd be people's biggest, like, why would I buy one of these if I'm going to tip it? But it's like literally just putting it on the opposite way makes it like almost impossible to tip. So it's tight. But yeah, no, I mean, I've, I've tried to, like I take the FUV out whenever I can. And then whenever like, I can on these like curves and I just, yeah, I don't know. I've had it skid a lot. Yeah. Uh, that's for, that's kind of scary. Cause yeah. you don't know if you're going to hit the, like the sidewalk or not, but mm-hmm. um, one tower strokes are yeah. and you're like, <laughs> you're like, fuck. And then the thing is a rental. It's also <laughs> <laughs> speaking of, I can't even yeah. get rentals. I like work for Arkimoto yeah. and I'm like, Hey everyone, can I get a rental? They're like, no, other people have burned out your opportunity to do it. I'm like, I haven't Pretty even gotten much, one. Yeah. Like, I literally have to, like, go and knock on Mark's door and be like, hey, can I use your fuv every day to get fu- uh, TikTok footage, which is, like, holy cow. Yeah, no, it's, cow. it's crazy. Like, the rentals, they're they're in so much, like, in such heavy use. That such we just, we don't even use. get access to them. Crazy. Uh, I think we have, like, we have, like, one, a few marketing vehicles right now. Yeah, so you're marketing all... and event planning? You're not uh, So, I'm in marketing and stuff. UX. Cool. Uh, I just, I haven't got into, we haven't st- I don't know if I can talk about this or not. Yeah, but like, like yeah. in terms of what aspect of Arkimoto you're working oh, your way yeah, into sure. is, is more of like uh, event planning, marketing, UX, rather than actually using your degree. Are you one? Because I'm one of those people. Oh, I'm who not I got using a degree, degree and I hate it. Oh, I wish sure. I could give it Same. back and get my money. Everyone, <laughs> literally everyone I, who I know, talked you, to. You know what's fucking crazy? Yeah. Last night I was like thinking about like what can we talk about on the podcast. Yeah. And one of my ideas was like, okay, maybe we can talk about like a college degree and like how fucking useless, crazy it, useless. it is, right? Um. Like that, I, I was like, maybe we could talk about that. I didn't know you'd like also believe that too. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's dope. Um, I'm 25k in debt. 
for a kinesiology degree, which yeah. has got me nothing because they wait all the way to your fourth year to be like, okay, go internship at the job that you wanted to be yeah. at because you have to do it. And I was at a PT clinic. I'm like, literally one day in, I'm like, I hate this. I'm going to leave. And then they like called my school and they're like, we're kicking them out of this. And I'm like, okay. And then I just finished up, like literally all the degrees I had were like pack classes. So yeah. badminton, tennis, pickleball, like literally my last year of college was a joke, an actual yeah. joke. I was playing pickleball and badminton <laughs> from like one Is to that, four Was that part day. of your course load? Yes, you need like, like play pickleball. Yes, Jesus you need like Christ. ten pack courses, and I saved all for the last two terms. So I just took yoga, sports, uh, ultimate yeah. frisbee, all these things. And prior to that, I'd taken all the hard classes, and I got through all the thing. I was already so in debt that I couldn't just be like, I'm going to change my. They should literally year one. They'd be like, okay, go shadow or intern at what you want to be at. Yeah. And then see if you want it. Furthermore, don't make 16, 17, 18 year olds pick what they want to do for the rest of their life and be like. Pfft figure it out yeah and then they they're willing to give you so much money to like go to so school but much. then you end up in debt and then yeah. it's like you're really giving an 18 year old like a hundred something thousand so dollars in debt much. like it's it's a lot and then it's like hey can i get a small business loan to actually start nope, no nah. you're so no. in debt from school yeah. <laughs> like what are you talking about <laughs> it's ridiculous it's literally like they're just trying to make everyone into like well, no you can't have your own business you have to work for someone bigger than you you have to yeah. be micromanaged your whole life until eventually you have power over people i'm like i don't want that I don't know. The idea of having people work under me, it's like this this idea that keeps getting brought up. I'm like, that's like the least attractive thing ever for me. And the more people my age who I'm talking to, everyone's like, I don't want to work with that? someone next to me. Yeah, as next opposed to me. To under me. Or code right? under you, like yeah. robots and code working, like replicating yeah. under you. And then it's just like a lot of people you talk to just like power in this weird way where it's like, this is off putting, man. Like, this is the kind of person you want to be. And they question you if you're like, you don't want to be in a leadership role. I'm like, not in one bit. What the fuck are you talking about? I mean, being in leadership, I think it's a great opportunity if you get it. But it, I just think, like, as a leader, you can't make the people who work quote, under you, right? Mm -hmm. You can't have them feel like shit. And you can't have them, like, feel like, oh, like, they're in, there's a weird power dynamic. Like, that's yeah. the worst. But to some extent, you pay their bills. So you should be able to tell people no, what to I mean, do. No, I mean, you you should be able to tell them what to do, but at that same time, you don't disrespect them. Yeah. Right? There's a very fine line there, and it's it's very – it's not even hard to do this. Like, I, I think as a leader, it's very simple to respect your employees. Even – I get, like, you pay, your, you pay their bills or whatever, yeah. but that doesn't mean you get to, like, completely control their life and yeah. – um, you know, make them feel like they don't want to work at the place they're working at. I think at. every good boss or, like, like a uh, person who, like, leaders people thinks that they're doing that effectively. Yeah. Like, the weird thing is just being, like, if anything, just re respect people's time off. Like, encourage people to, like, start their own thing and then, like, leave the company. Like, honestly, like, the best thing to do would be, like, I'm going to give you skills to go off and, like, become your own leadership role or do your yeah. own thing rather than, like, yeah, I'm going to keep you here forever. It's like, this is... I don't know. You're 20. If you're just about to graduate, you're like 23, 24. I'm 20. You're 20. Yeah. Dope. Um, the world's at this weird place where don't you almost feel like there's a decent chance there won't be like a solid world to be building in in like 20 years. And you're like kind of leveling that with like, well, why would I work really hard and hustle? Or like, or maybe you have a way better view of it. Uh, like of the world and how it. Yeah. I mean, for me. I don't know, like, I've always just kind of been building stuff on my own Nice. Uh, since, like, I was, like, in elementary school. I used to resell, uh, or not resell, I used to sell these... <laughs> Stickers uh, to other fucking 10-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> no, I used to sell these ninja, I used to make ninja stars out With of paper. Po post-it notes, yeah. Absolutely. And they would fold in so they would become, like, a, a closed disc and they could open out and become, like, a frisbee that had a hole in it. Um, You're selling me on it right now, man. Yeah. <laughs> and it would be, like, all different types of colors because post-it notes come in, like, neon colors and all that shit, right? Yeah. So people, like, kids would love that. When I was, like, 11 years old, people would want to – they'd pay, like, a dollar for it. I'd pay 25 cents to make it, right? Dope. So What would okay. you spend that money on, though? You're in middle school. No, so that's kind of what led me into, like, uh, reselling and stuff. I used that money to kind of buy my first pair of Jordans nice. um, in high school when I started uh, playing basketball. And then – yeah, so it was just a weird transition, but I yeah I think and the snack shack too, at baseball that was that was really cool. Fucking good. Yeah. This is gonna be a weird, interesting thing, but really quick. Yeah. So I've given something like fifty five or fifty six copies of this book away. When okay. I she, I gave it to uh, Nicole Appellian's kid was there and Nicole Appellian, and I gave him a copy of this. And before Sandy Monroe, the person on your shirt was yeah. like, dude, I read that book thirty times. And yeah. same with uh, the president of the company. Michael Oakes, and okay. he suggested two books, The How to Win Friends and Influence People, which I'm yet to get into because okay. I don't really like that book. 
having only like met people who have read it, I don't like that book. And another book which I really liked. But anyways, man, it's a really fun book, and okay. there's a copy for you. I just started awesome. ordering ten copies at a time, and okay. as soon as I give them away, I mark like, yeah. all right, there's sixty gone. And yeah. I'm this far, and I'm like, why didn't I keep track of who got them? Yeah. Like, I don't think everyone's reading them because it's a weird book where you gotta read like the same chapter, or like so you make it through the first fifty pages. I'll explain to everyone because I've never done it on the show. Uh, once you make it fifty pages in first 50 is like fiction and then it hits like scroll one oh, and it's pretty much 10 scrolls and each one you read in the morning after lunch and then out loud before bed oh so it's like okay. a 10 month thing and I, I learned from it from green lights by matthew mcconaughey okay. yeah he wrote about it in his like memoir thing where he's like this is the most impactful thing in my life outside my parents he was reading it right before he got the role in dazed and confused i think it was like okay. before he like hit success yeah he like so so I'm like okay I'll order one and then I ordered ten copies because I'm like oh I lose them like I like you know I just hard to keep track of one and I'm like fucking breaking it um, my first copy's up there so anyways and now I started giving a bunch away so there's a fun book to uh, oh, do cool. you read at all I mean I can start <laughs> I didn't read it all yeah, no, until I, I got this book I was like my first 113 episodes I was at it like very adamantly against therapy and adamantly against reading I'm like okay. reading turns you into a nerd and therapy is like this thing where they keep grifting you to get, keep giving them more money when really like they're kind of losers who need to get their own life together like therapists should show like <laughs> if you go to one they're like oh yeah I'm single on SSRIs yeah. and obese it's like why who maybe they would... just understand the world from like a different perspective right therapists? Like, like well yeah therapists they, they're usually like they have a degree in psychology maybe they just understand how like the way people operate and they just don't like that right yeah. and they choose to not be a part of it i mean there are a lot of people like that it's r it's rare that i meet someone who goes into like i don't know if uh, you made friends at college who were going into psychology were they anyone who you'd respect in the slightest or were they their own basket cases who were like oh i'll go help other people i'm like you're a broken person <laughs> fix yeah, yourself i mean first. a lot of the people who were psychology majors um they definitely had issues. Yeah. But I, I mean, I feel like everyone has issues. So like, I, I can't really fault them for that. What's no. your issue? If you were to have one that's like public or is it like a private issue? <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think I, everyone has issues. What are you talking about? Like, like no, I mean, it, like to some extent, right? Like I mean, everyone is like, some people might have like more issues than other or more severe issues. So you, than but but so let's take it this far. Like, yeah. cause this is something that like, I don't know. I get in a lot of arguments that things can be better than they are. Like, you could have, you could reduce your issues. You could have less issues. Yeah, than you, you can have. have less so someone issues. could have no issues. Like, or is there like a minimum where you have to have at least like one issue? You know. Yeah, but I mean, there's. Okay, tell me what's what. Who who doesn't have issues? I think Mark is perfect. No, like, <laughs> he's obviously very really eccentric, yeah. but I respect that. Like any, anyway, like he is someone who is so elevated in stature, yet he doesn't have an executive assistant. Like he literally is person to person interactions. In, and yeah. there's like, I would say like four to five people that I know. I mean, you seem to have a close relationship with your parents. My dad's one of them. Um, Kenzie's obviously a pretty wonderful person. She has a jewel addiction, <laughs> which we're on day three of no jewel. As I'm sitting here, I'm just like, I just want to like play with and light and smoke something or eat yeah, something. I, I was on that for a while. Holy too, yeah. fuck. Those are the most addicting substances I've ever came in contact with. I'm like, whoa, like blow, kratom, no matter what else there is in life, <laughs> yeah. nicotine and, and I've even had nicotine, like, like the mouth ones, like the oh, Zens geez. and stuff. Yeah. But dude. Jewel got into my life about a month and a half ago, and since then, I'm like, if one's around, I'm like, I want to hit that. It's just, like, the quickest, easiest dopamine. And yeah. it isn't even, like, the lungs or anything that's bad. It's literally the fact that whenever I don't have it, I'm like, I should be doing something. I should be taking something to alter my brain every 20 seconds. Yeah, definitely. Fucked me up. So you got into Jewel too, and you got out for, like, any reason? Uh, no, I mean, like, it's just part of college, right? Like, you're partying, you meet people at parties you hit it a few times and then it yeah then it becomes more of a regular thing and yeah then, but yeah I, I got off of it pretty early um i just i never really liked the feeling per se like nausea if, yeah that yeah. exactly like a yeah. weird amount of nausea but then for some reason i'm like but then it you, goes like, away and I'm it like, goes I'll away and then you want to again it's yeah. like what's going on <laughs> yeah. psychologically that it makes me want to do that but yeah. yeah so i'm like i think there's some people who have like no real issues but i'm like i would say like the one time just like any time I've met people who like I've had one therapist on the show and I'm not going to like smash talk someone who came on the show. But I'm yeah. like, at the end of the day, I'm like, I wouldn't go to you. <laughs> and like, like, again, I've been to like <laughs> literally one. And there was like counseling between Kenzie and I to try to figure out like this one issue we had yeah. of her having a dog and me not wanting to have a dog in my life. Yeah. And it ended with me and the guy literally almost getting in a fight and him asking me to leave. And I was like, and that what? doesn't seem like a good thing. No, he session. was like, tell me about your childhood. I'm like, it was, it was normal. It was just yeah. normal. Like, we were coming to you, like, to answer, like, to solve a problem for us. Yeah. And he's like, just this weird grifter aspect of, like, keep coming and giving me money every week for, like, the rest. If there was no money aspect or if therapy involved MDMA or if therapy involves, like, an eight-hour session, it'd be like, yeah. oh, this is awesome. Yeah. But the fact that it's like, yeah, you pay and you only talk to someone for one hour. So just when you start to get deep, you leave. You get out of there. 
It's like, this is wrong, man. It's set up in the wrong way. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I don't really, I, I mean, therapy is great for whoever can, like, utilize it. I don't, I'm kind of in the middle about it. I don't really have much of an opinion. Yeah. My, the thing I'm looking forward to be is, like, 60 and realizing <laughs> how many people killed themselves or are in way worse shape because they didn't go to therapy because they listened to my show. Honestly, like, therapy should be take MDMA and go in a float tank and just think for yourself and come to the huh. conclusion. Yeah. And it's, like, more of, like, a building a framework and a tool belt of, like, understanding, like, hey, if you start thinking about suicide think it through rather than just being like, oh, I can't think about that. So your brain keeps hitting that. Like, I think there's yeah. so many things that people say, oh, I shouldn't think about that or shouldn't do this or that. They're like, that's kind of the basis of needing therapy is like just not thinking a problem through. Also, there's very legitimate problems. Like people yeah. who experience trauma, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm done. We're at episode <laughs> 116 or something. I'm done telling people. Speaking of, I forgot to write it. Holy fuck. Right before you came, normally yeah. I'm writing all, but I realized that. So I have two nice cameras and one shitty camera. Yeah. Shitty camera doesn't even pick up that. So you know, I think I think you gotta like adjust it a little bit, or maybe get a fourth camera. <sighs> Cam uh, Kenzie can't have her own camera. <laughs> She's lucky to have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you should. I mean, you should definitely like, get a camera like up there. Maybe get the whole. It would be cool. Or there's, like a fish eye, you know? So there's a that fourth input. I was going to have it <laughs> um, be, be an iPad that, yeah. like, that could be in there. But then if she pulls up something like that we're, like, talking about debating or whatever, a video, we can't watch it either unless there's uh, also a TV in here. Yeah. Do you see how, like, I mean, you see how many cables this I is. Think this a is TV, a mess. I think a TV would be really, like, maybe have a TV here or, like, back there. Yeah. Um, or on the table, honestly. And then that way, like, you're get And then you can have uh, all your cameras, like. Porn playing the whole time. <laughs> I mean, before you leave, <laughs> yeah. man, I literally, an entire wall of my house is a projector. So okay. I'm like, sometimes I might bring it in here and have something projected behind the guests the whole time. Yeah. Like, something fun. Eventually, I want to, like, start having fun and fuck with people. But right now, I'm just getting my bearings. Like, the first yeah, two yeah. guests I had back were literally, like, people would get been on the show, like, five or six times, old friends. And I realized it almost made it harder. Talking, like, uh, talking to people who you, like, know all the time. Is like really hard to like ask them new questions because like, you know so much. I know about everything them, yeah. about you. Yeah. What, am I gonna like I fake like. impromptu do this for like the cameras? Yeah. But then meeting a new person, like we've kind of met a couple times, yeah. but I'm like, but really? I, yeah, like, I haven't had like a full conversation with you for no, sure. Yeah. We don't know anything about each other. I, like but, the more yeah. I'm in public, I just like don't want to be the center of attention at all anymore, especially like company events, because I'm like, man, when I get talking, like you can't talk about like, oh man, I love MDMA, and I love this and that, like in public when you're attached to a company, which is why like currently I'm like a. Uh, independent contractor which i think gives me a lot of freedom to not be like wearing an arkimoto shirt right yeah. now and be like people can be like look at that employee who's yeah. like a horrible Definitely. example of your employees i'm like yeah. it makes a lot of sense plus but, like, yeah like going back to how i met mark though like, yeah I, I think it's a crazy story totally. that's why i want to your tell dad you. looked up yeah no you can um, always come back i, I just yeah. try to interrupt people uh, <laughs> so yeah um basically like my dad had found the company i had researched it i thought it was weird um, but then I researched it further and then the idea of like having like smaller vehicles made more sense to me And then I also had a motorcycle too. So that's why like I understood that as well um, And then in May I had messaged Matt because Matt had basically tweeted that like, you know, Arkhamoto is gonna need a lot of help um, In the coming months and years. So I you guess. had known him before you followed him on Twitter. Or he was just no I just Twitter I just was I used to research Arkhamoto on Twitter cool. too, right? Uh, just Twitter uh, reddit like all the different um, So you're following Greg the person who mark uh, interacts with all the time. Uh, no, I don't follow Greg no. or or wealth molester <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, so uh, I met Matt uh, Messaged him and he was he, like he, he responded hella quick too, which was kind of like I, I was not expecting that Yeah, and he's like yeah, like let's set up a zoom meeting like next Monday. This is like a Friday. I think and then Yeah, and then on Monday, it's like 6 p.m. We're on the zoom call. It's like 15 minutes and he's like do you want to meet mark tomorrow? Right, and I'm just like how the fuck am I gonna be mark tomorrow? Yeah, like I thought he's in Oregon and then they told me that he's or basically mark a uh, Matt was just like yeah, he's in they're on like that West Coast road trip, right down to San Diego, yeah. and they're on their way up. And he was in Palo Alto, nice. and I live like maybe twenty minutes from there. Sweet. So um, I was like, yeah, like I can meet up with him. And he, and then he called Mark. I wasn't really hopeful about it because I'm yeah. like, there's no he's way probably Mark's really gonna busy. Want. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, he's the CEO, like he's busy, and he runs like he has Marble Up, right? Or Marble mm -hmm. It Marble Up. It up. Mayhem. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. kidding. We don't rep that. No. Yeah, but like, yeah, he has like that video yeah. game company too. It's a lot of like it takes a lot of work. Um, and he has star voting. Yeah, like it's just he's doing a fuck ton of things and he has a lot of a he lot of shit on his, plate. on his plate. But yeah, he and then they Matt was just like, yeah, you can meet him at eight a.m. in the morning at this cafe, and I was I'd just like, it. I was like, fuck yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, eight a.m. was kind of difficult. We've been getting about one p.m. to three p.m. We have a brutal sleep schedule. Jesus. We don't even know what's going. on. We can't fix it. Yeah, it's literally like midnight, and we're like, we have more, we have energy finally. Like all day, we're like groggy, we're like drinking two or three Red Bulls, and then yeah. like midnight rolls around, we're like. 
I feel good. Yeah. I want to do stuff. And it's like, I don't know how you fix it. We're cats. We're cats. At this point. Yeah, at this no, point. I mean, I think um, melatonin, right? Oh, we take melatonin every yeah. day. <laughs> that that, that yeah. kind of used to help me in college. We, I won't even it. speak for her. I yeah. love substances. So if there's a substance, I've probably tried it or taken it or enjoy it. Um, but anyway, so you somehow <laughs> managed to wake up at 8 a.m. Yeah. and groggily met him there. Yeah, and then I, so I met him at the, I took my motorcycle too, um, just because I thought like maybe if he had like, some kind of vehicle I could test drive. Yeah. Like maybe I need a helmet or whatever. So I just took my motorcycle and I also, I just didn't feel like driving. Um, so I took my motorcycle, pull up, and then we just talked for like a solid like 30, 40 minutes. And then I, I was like, yeah, like I really would want to work at Arkhamoto yeah. at like in UX and stuff like that. Uh, nice. UX and uh, user interface as well. And UX for the tards out there is? Uh, user experience. Dope. Um, but yeah, I, and I told him I wanted to work in that. <laughs> Um, and then he was like, okay, like, are you willing to relocate? And like, he, he had asked me that and I was like, yeah, sure. And then he even let me test drive the prototype roadster that he had on him, like nice. the silver and yellow one, I think. Yeah. And that was pretty cool. Um, and then after that, like I told him like I might be coming up to Oregon cause I just wanted to get a factory tour in general. Um, and then I came up to Oregon like two weeks later and then the rest is kind of history from there. And then at, at some point though. I came back to Oregon. I came to Oregon twice. Are um, you gonna go back to the Bay Area? Ken and I are gonna do a Bay Area trip, and the pl- pl- the yeah. person whose like place we we're gonna stay at, he is so flaky. So he's like this sixty four year old, really really wealthy guy, yeah. and he's like, oh you can come down. And he's like, yeah. no, I decided to go see my girlfriend in Montana. And yeah. he's like, oh you can come down now. No, I'm gonna go do this. And yeah. I'm like, it's so unreliable, but it's such a nice thing. Oh, we have a place to stay down there. That's yeah. in San- Santa Cruz. And a car. And oh, a it's car. in Santa Cruz. Yeah, yeah I, go to, I go to UC Santa Cruz. So. Yeah, so it's like this cool thing where I'm like, now it's like, I have so many people in the Bay Area that I want to talk to. And yeah. how, like, how, like, I literally just bring almost this whole show except the sick ass table yeah. down there. Um, but it just keeps getting pushed back. And now with Delta, like probably a lot of the people, even vaccinated people, are probably not going to be willing to yeah. meet and talk to But the thing is, California is like 80 plus percent vaccinated, I think. Nice. Um, which is a good thing because I think the Delta variant is hitting a lot of people who are unvaccinated. Um, the people who are vaccinated, Those I don't think. Those fucking dumb idiots. <laughs> Anyone who's unvaccinated should be brought out and shot in the street like a dog. <laughs> I'm unvaccinated. She's got one. She's one one deep. Uh, and if I do it, I'm going to go Moderna as well. But I'm like, more or less, I'm holding off because I notice it makes a lot of people mad that I'm not vaccinated. Okay. And it gives me some sort of pleasure that I'm like, hey, is this easy to rile people up? The fact that I just don't give in to like, and also like, I think it's just the safety aspect of it, right? Because uh, I mean, I really personally, I don't know like what else the vaccine would do besides protect you from the. Yeah. Like it doesn't really COVID. protect you if I get it. Or, yeah. like, it hasn't been proven. So I'm like, if it was, like, literally I was hurting other people by not getting it, I'd be like, okay, I'll get it. But the fact that I'm like, it's just protecting me, I'm like, again, I say this a lot, but if you go to Walmart and you look at the actual demographic of people, that these statistics that you read are, like, yeah. it's, like, a lot of really old, really obese people who are, like, smoking cigarettes. And I'm like, that's the statistic. It's not, like, just to look at all these young people or, like, healthy people or even just thin people. 43% of people are obese. So it's like, that's that's the that's the demographic here yeah so i don't know i'm i'm and i'm I'm not gonna be one of those people i literally specifically am never like braggadocious about it because there's so many articles that are like this person who who bash talked and like underplayed covid died the next day and i'm like i don't want to play with like the irony of life because i know for a fact it would come back to bite me so i'm sure it's awful i'm sure i may eventually get in it may suck but i'm like until then i'm like I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I am a gambler at the end of the day. Back when I was into like stocks and like watching Martin Shakrell, it was literally yeah. just so I could like essentially gamble. Like eventually I got into options and stuff. Damn, options are crazy. Options are crazy. So <laughs> then I just got out and waited yeah. a couple of years and I looked back at like all like the blue chip ish or like at least triple leverage blue t- yeah. chip stocks that I had. I'm like, if I just left my money in there, I'd have a down payment and my school would be paid off. I'm like, what am I doing? So now I just put all my money in like just triple leverage blue, blue chip stocks. I'm like, that's good enough for me now. Okay. The gambling of it and like the mental knowing that like i would wake up almost sweating and be like what's my money doing today and i'm like that's not good for my health what the fuck's going on i think like the best way to invest is you just put money that you don't need Mm -hmm. uh anytime soon so i'd say like in the next six months just put you use that money six months a year use that money invest it and don't look at it is it weird having like some probably close to over like 80 percent of your in like of your worth in ethereum or do you like once oh you no mine the I, ethereum, I wouldn't i wouldn't say ethereum's like 80 percent it's not even close to like really so like you're mining it do you sell and buy other coins with it then no I, oh so just out of my it. out of my crypto portfolio yeah it's it's the only thing i own yeah um with yeah 
Yeah, for sure. But yeah. like, but like, I don't know. At some point, like, if, if I just kept banking up Ethereum, I'd be like, I'm gonna somewhat hedge against the Vitalik guy being a <laughs> massive shill. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm like, I have a yeah, lot yeah. of faith in it. Ethereum and Bitcoin are the only two like coins I have because I'm okay. like, I don't have enough time looking at the other ones and enough people who I respect like yeah. them that I'm like, it has like this tan, like this like tertiary level of trust and respect without me having to like spend hundreds of hours looking into it to understand Definitely. it. Definitely. But really quick, now that we're probably about halfway into the show, I'm going to light up one of the Metolius CBD. And I don't know, do, have you met John Fries from through these people? Yeah, yeah, I got, he gave me one of the, I don't nice. know Oh yeah, at the, at the place where that yeah, photo the, was taken. Yeah. So what he's smoking is actually uh, Sandy and him lighting a canagar, yeah, which I have, car, yeah. but dude, I cannot smoke them in here purely because I'm like, can you I imagine how I much smoke really, it would cause? I don't really like canagars per se. You're not allowed to say anything bad about about bad about. No, no, I'm kidding. Um, honestly, they're like a lot to smoke. The joints yeah, exactly. are really nice on the the show because I'm like, yeah. you know, I am inside, and there's another person here, so I'm gonna light one up. Uh, feel free that. to if you want. Just use the ashtray. Yeah. I don't know. So I put the epoxy over this, and I don't know how well it is to heat resistance or chemicals. Yeah. So I'm doing my best to not like completely fuck it up, and I'm excited to smoke some weed potentially later on in the show. How, Kenzie, how far in are we? Thirty minutes. Dope. Thirty-five. Nice. But yeah, man. Did you think of anything else? I've never had guests that I know of, like, try to, like, plan something to talk about the night before. Yeah. No, I mean, I just, I didn't want, like, I, again, every opportunity to speak is, like, an opportunity to really put yourself out there. And I, like, you shouldn't waste that at all, right? Plus, like, I, again, I haven't met you. Like, I haven't, like, we haven't talked that much before. So I, I thought, like, maybe, and we're also, like, a lot closer in age than most of the people at Arcimoto. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a part of it. Yeah. I mean, you can come back on the show and this is your only time you'll ever come on. No, yeah. like, I mean, being a daily show and it's like, honestly, like once a month, I'm going to have a, like, like a lot of people as regulars back on the show. Like anyone who likes coming and hanging out and talking yeah. and then you can, I mean, when you have a more professional background, you could always just take a clip of you speaking and use it or post it on your own thing. Like I'm not going to steal or like not allow people to use their own content. Like you're making this with me is the yeah, whole thing. For sure. And if anything, I'm like, I don't have the time to cut clips from every single video I make. Like I'm like, as I'm doing this, cause I've never had video. So I never cut clips from the first hundred so episodes, yeah. but I'm like, fuck, I got to watch an hour long episode and cut clips from it to post it. If I want any level of success from this show. Cause I'm yeah. like, it's hard to convince people like, Hey, watch this hour long like, YouTube yeah, video. Exactly. Like, Fuck. But if it's like 30 seconds, that's where it's at. How's your YouTube channel doing for the show? I just opened it today. Okay. The video, I actually just ordered an, uh, an ethernet cable oh, shit. cause it took okay. six hours to upload it. Even yeah. with it, like I took the laptop and put it next to the modem yeah. and it took six hours, it took overnight. And then, um, I think it shut off. So like that was like four of it. And then I like woke it up for more. Um, yeah. But pretty much I just opened it. I have like one skit on there. Like I've never really promoted stuff because I feel really weird shilling my own thing to friends and family. And yeah. I'm like, I have people who like message me with stuff like, hey, watch this new song I made on SoundCloud. And I'm like, I mute and block those people. Even if <laughs> yeah. I know them pretty well, yeah. I'm like, next time I see them, I'll be very cordial. But like, yeah, stop shilling your shit. So I don't want to be one of those people. So I'm literally just going to wait for the algorithm to kind of like, episodes are coming out. I don't know if anyone actually knows aside from like, just I put it on my Instagram story of setting this up. Cause it's like, I, I would think like the best way to probably market a channel that you don't, you, you obviously don't want to market to like friends and family. I would say just, you know, on Twitter, like post about it. Um, just like talk about it with people who don't, you don't know. Yeah. And they're more likely to like give you a chance and, uh, actually like friends and family hate seeing you ex you succeed. yeah exactly i mean uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean, strangely true um yeah i i don't know i think with friends um there's definitely some kind of level of jealousy that can um develop yeah especially because every i think everyone's kind of on their own timeline uh in terms of where they are in life and some people just achieve things a little faster than others. Yeah. Um, or they're just at a different point in their life, which is why they're achieving the things they are. And that's okay. Like people need to be okay with that. And just, you don't want to like ruin friendships over like money, totally. uh, which is what I see happen a lot. Yeah. Um, money is definitely like a big thing that people like. But anyways, will... can I borrow 10 grand? No, I'm <laughs> kidding. And, and, but like further than that, it's like, it's the show's such a weird thing that I would never expect someone to share it because like last episode ended with me talking to the guest and being like, It'd be fun to like hire a gay porn star to like dress up as Jesus and get fucked just to make people mad. And I'm like, I wouldn't expect someone to share that publicly. Be like, this is really yeah. funny. I'm gonna share it and have all my because most people like yeah. have jobs in like offices where their employee, like their their coworkers, might get them fired for stuff like that. So I'm like, there's a weird aspect where I don't expect my show to be super shareable. I expect yeah. literally the algorithm to pick it up and whoever like might be really inclined toward that kind of content yeah. to find it. And honestly, so are you about like, are you more towards like uncensored content then? Yeah. Okay. I, my okay. goal is to eventually do, um, 
Schedule One Recreational Substances live on the show. Oh, Because we're in Oregon. I, I mean, what can they do? I think I'd be down to help you do that and like do a show with you on that. Like that would be dope. Fun. Because what are they going to do? We're in Oregon. Like the worst you get is a misdemeanor and a hundred dollar fine. Yeah. Like that's, that's not that bad. So that's why I'm like I'm starting slow with this. I'm honestly going to like ask some people and be like, if I do ketamine or do some fun show like visually on the show because yeah. it'll be a blast. Can anyone get me in trouble for that? Oh, you mean like a like that type of substance? Like, Listen, what, oh, you oh I was weed. thinking like weed or something like yeah, that. No, yeah. you didn't. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is on the record forever. You immediately hopped on this. No, I'm kidding. But like, like, because it would be so interesting. It's not like that well recorded. Like, how do people act on substances? Like, when people mostly like want to look up, like they find this new drug, like someone sells them something, or they like. Yeah. They're like, what is this like? So or are you like, trying to like make like a review channel for like different stuff? Like, or just like occasionally, <laughs> like if, if a guest comes on and they like tend to have yeah. substance, I'll be like, yeah, I'll enjoy it with you okay, live on the sure. show. Because yeah. I'm like, my whole thing is I'm like, as long as I don't have anything on me, yeah. the worst that they're going to do is like break down the house and be like, he has a yeah, lot no, of I, CBD. I <laughs> I'm like, what are you going to do? But I'm like, it's like, if I'm the one who like, yeah, I have this for every single show, people are going to be like, well, let's go raid his house. Yeah. So it's like, as long as I don't have anything, as long as like a guest hypothetically just brings something, I'm like. It'll be fun if it ever happens. That's like way down the line. I don't want that yeah, to derail definitely. the show. This is not a drug yeah, review actually, channel. No, yeah, no. I, I think like you, you can incorporate it into your show if like a guest does bring it on. Um, I think that would be pretty fucking cool to do. It'd be fun right. to watch. It'd yeah. be memeable. Um, yeah, <laughs> part of it's just like wh- so, I don't know how to explain the show to people because everyone is like, is that a drug review channel? Is it this or is it that or is it an interview? It's like it's just this weird thing where it's whatever I'm in the mood for that day. Yeah. Is what I record. Like I'm set up, and I'm just gonna do like one of those like creative process things where like you just go sit down and do it. And I have faith that after long enough, like this is something I enjoy. I've tried all these other creative endeavors that I like. Hey, I hate making music. I hate writing. I hate kind of making short films because you have to have all these people and like they're the actors or they're shooting. And it's like you want to do every part of it. But this, I'm like, everyone thinks pretty much set up. It's just a fun like. I don't get to hang out and talk with people that often. Not even just because yeah. me. But because no one does. No, everyone has their phone or people. It's like, well, we're do- getting food or we're going on a walk. I'm like, I want to create a situation where I get to reach out to new people or have old friends on where I get to hang out and just talk at them or talk with them okay. so for like an hour. <laughs> I like the talk. Yeah. Talk yeah. at them. Talk at them. <laughs> I just need to get a lot. This is my therapy. Why would you pay for therapy? Start up a just, podcast. Yeah, just, you know, talk to people. I mean, I think that's awesome. Like, I've always kind of in college, I kind of wanted to start a podcast about like financial stuff. Yeah. Uh, just kind of teaching like college students financial literacy because that is still something we don't teach in college uh which is kind of stupid It'd be fun to talk to you about it's like it's like you're giving some person a loan of over a hundred thousand dollars but you won't teach them financial literacy was your school a hundred thousand dollars um is it like do you talk about your private like i already said like what my school costs like is it something you're public about or private oh i mean it's like a public school right so yeah yeah so it's like in-state tuitions like 14 grand a year but then out of state um, goes to like 50, like it, it's, it, it's really up there, but you were in state. Yeah. I mean, so, like, so it was something like 60 before grants and stuff. Uh, yeah. Nice. For me. So for me, it's like, I probably just, uh, like last year I was living at home. So was just paying tuition, no housing. Housing costs more actually in Santa Crazy. Cruz. Right. Yeah. It's oh, fucking yeah. nuts. Um, I got out of dorms the first year. They make yeah. dorms mandatory and it's yeah. a grand to share a little, like one bedroom. Yeah. And I got out of it. So I lived with friends all four years of college. It was a blast. But for us, I had to pay, I was paying close to two grand a month to get a single dorm my sophomore year, um, which was fucking Holy crazy. Uh, that, like, Criminal. With the, with the meal plan. Like, the thing is, and the meal plan's required, even though I had a car. That's what I was um, explaining to her, and she's like, that can't be. I'm like, no, they force yeah. you to buy it, and then yeah. you have to eat shitty food yeah. or let it go to waste. Yeah. So. Whack. The college, I mean, the college system is going to crumble as more people don't use their degrees and yeah. learn other skills online. Like, where'd you learn uh, UX stuff? Um, okay, so that's another story. So when I was in in high school again, uh, my senior year, we, my, me and my friends developed like this application. Uh, we, I think it was called like Paratus or something like that. It, it was like it was just a, a food ordering app that kind of had this social media component. Like, and you we coded thought, it, or I, or like I, you're just I designed, I designed nice. it. Nice, very I cool. Yeah. yeah. So we thought that like this would like blow up and like it. it and the thing is, it might have actually done well because of. I had a manager, a previous manager of mine who lived in Arizona, and he actually reached out to me this year, and he was like, someone actually has a similar app to what you made, and they actually have, like, like restaurants in the area using it. Dope. And I was like, damn, maybe, like, the whole long-term thing could have applied here, too. Yeah. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, so we actually we thought it would go big, but the issue was this was our second semester, senior year of high school. We all know how that goes. And uh, 
so we worked on it. We got it to a point where we had like the it was pretty complete in my opinion. Uh, we were just at we were at the point of getting the whole payment processing system set up with Stripe, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, we just didn't really like it. We we all went to college like right then, yeah. so we had like one one of the developers he went to school with me, and uh, he's doing really well now. And then the other the other front end developer we had he now works at LinkedIn mm-hmm. as cool. a full time software engineer. Nice. Um, but kind yeah, he went to sounds he, like hell. He in went many to ways. yeah. I mean, it's a <laughs> lot of work, but yeah, he went to SoCal for college and then my the other guy on our team he went to new york so that kind of led to the demise of that yeah uh which which was just fine like i mean we were just probably helped on the resumes to get the jobs though definitely i think that was how i got into uh my first internship nice um which was uh this was at a company called velocity cool uh out in california um they're they were funded by like salesforce like mainly yeah and And then they ended up getting bought over so like, it's like a boring company, Velocity. It sounds fun. It sounds like like a GeForce kind of. Like, no, like it's, it's it's like <laughs> they built like their own kind of CRM platform on top of Salesforce's platform for mm. different verticals. Interesting. Um, so Salesforce is a very yeah, customizable. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Salesforce is like a super customizable tool, right? Yeah. Um, and basically, what they did was they would they like customized it for different like verticals. So for insurance companies, for medical companies, for all these different things. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what they did, and then they got bought over last February. So I think. you knew you enjoyed UX before you even picked. Uh, oh yeah, because I had accounting the, I, or what was it? Finance, econ, economics. Econ, yeah. It's funny. My brother has an economics degree from yeah, OSU, though. I, I think yeah. He works at the government now. He's the enemy. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I love you. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that I I did yeah I did kind of know, but the thing was I was more of a developer at the time, uh, than like a designer per se. Like the thing we didn't have like a designer so i kind of had to design and develop like what it looked like mm-hmm. and then we had our front-end developer go in and actually make it like functional in terms Person of connecting. Has a shitty job yeah you have connect- a very fun job there i mean I, that's the thing a lot of these guys really love doing back-end work like uh you database work and all of that stuff they actually love doing that so props to them because yeah. i fucking hate it <laughs> seriously but um yeah so that's how i got into ux and then my internship was uh for so- like software engineering as a UI developer, mm-hmm. uh, did that when it got bought over by Salesforce. Did that there again last summer, and then this year I was like, I want to do something new. So what would be your, like dream for the next like couple of years? Like you get in with Arkimoto and then yeah. like Arkimoto to the moon, or like just like this I mean, kind if, of if, area if, of work. If I if possible, yeah. Yeah, but like like what at Arkimoto? Like pure, like what? I, just because a lot of people listening probably. Like, what do you do as a user experience person? You like oh, so this would be like designing. Screens. Stroke the people who are like in the fub, like make them really like it. Like um, well, it's like taking like what feedback they give us and seeing what we can really implement um into the product and not ju- not just doors. A- <laughs> Kidding. <laughs> uh, but like not just not just like things we could add to the product, but things to like make it easier for them to use. So like an application would be one thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, allowing them to like get into their vehicle without like a key stuff like that cool like i'd want to work on that yeah if that i got the possibility at arkhamoto to do that that would be awesome um but yeah uh, so yeah it is kind of like arkhamoto to the moon nice. if I, if well, I as it that. should be i'm yeah. like as soon as i met these people i'm like yo these are some cool people <laughs> yeah. like just like the kind the way in which they like do lead people yeah I actually really respect for like the first time i met like a, a boss type figure or like the ceo who was like oh He's like one of the most down to earth people I know. He lives Dude. his morals yeah. crazy. It's astounding. So I'm like, I, I am currently at that place in my life, but I'm like, who knows where I'm gonna be? Currently I'm making TikToks, but at a certain point I'm like, there's only so many ways you can like take yeah. a video of a fub. Like I and as soon as you're like, let's take drone shots, I was yeah. so excited. I'm like, dude, that'd be fucking sick. No, you like, need a license. I, yeah, like I wanna do drone shots, but it's just uh it, it just doesn't make sense right now. I cause I don't have like any licenses to like fly in Eugene like yeah. I have the FAA stuff but mm-hmm. I don't have like whatever commercial license yeah whatever yeah. the commercial stuff is lame but I, I really wanted to do like so before I got hired on I got an FUV for like five days mm. um, and I did like I made like a small reddit post about it and I really wanted to do like a day in the life video yeah like using an FUV like you know how like uh, what's his name um, that he's like that YouTuber that does like uh, Casey Neistat, right? Yeah, yeah. Like he does those things where he like will put the camera like when he drives into like uh like a parking lot, right? And then you like it's like a drive by of the camera of of the FUV or whatever vehicle. Yeah. Then he has like a drone shot maybe, and it's and then he'll like pick up the camera and then he'll vlog like whatever he's doing, mm-hmm. and then he'll hop back in the vehicle. Like, I just wanted to do something along the lines of that. 
Yeah. But it's so difficult to get drone shots, dude. So difficult. Yeah. Well, and it's just like, honestly, the whole job seems like a yeah. lot of work editing. As you can tell, like, she's here, obviously, wonderful presence, but also just like live yeah. switching between the cameras so yeah. I don't have to impose is like, that see I couldn't run a daily show if I literally had to have three different cameras or even two and like split between me guest me guest whenever they talk I tried it once it took four hours to edit the one hour video I'm like yeah that's not happening for sure so that's why I didn't have video for the first hundred episodes I was like I'll wait and then black magic put out this ATM mini thing which lets you live switch and I'm like bought it like pretty soon after it came so out. like what's your story though how did you get my to story Arkhamoto? yeah um I Really quickly, how the show started because the show's what brought me to Okamoto. Okay. I um, was listening to Mike Tyson live on Joe Rogan. He was talking about DMT. <laughs> Looked it up. Um, I made it and started taking it often, daily. And someone from California gave me 10 grand and flew me down to LA for a week. And that bought the laptop, that bought the the, the mics, like pretty much everything. And I recorded a couple shows with him. I got to meet Joe Rogan. I flew back up. The guy killed himself four months after I came back because he had severe mental issues like Damn. he was like he was also like into dmt and like yeah. there's a very fine line between like understanding like oh this is like a cool tool in the tool belt or like this is like mother so, guy speaking to me like fuck your head yeah, some of the stuff yeah. can definitely fuck you up and he was like yeah money's not going to be a thing anymore which is he gave eight hundred thousand dollars away uh to people to pay for college tuition to me to go down there and meet joe and and get to podcast oh and you stuff. met joe rogan i met joe rogan Dude, that's stuff. fucking awesome incredible especially because yeah, yeah. i'm like oh joe rogan shot, uh, showed me dmt and podcast i have a podcast and i yeah. tried dmt and i got to meet the guy i'm like whoa okay stuff pretty interesting <laughs> um so then i'm here i'd been running a show with like a lot of people in town like venture capital uh people which is actually one of um mark's old like co-workers at garage games which is really cool and i'm like I had one of your like old friends that you've known for 10 years on my show, like two or three times. Yeah. Um, he's actually leaving Oregon. He's going to come. Joe Marushak's going to come on the show one last time before he leaves. And I randomly reached out to Mark right before I was going to go down to San Francisco. I'm like, and Santa Cruz. And I'm like, hey, man, it'd be cool to have you on the show or just meet and see Arkhamotos before I go down there so I can talk about him, have you on the show when I come back up. Yeah. Um, and me and Zubair immediately became very good friends yeah. and hang out with Zubair a lot. And obviously Mark and Mark and I kicked it off. He's such a busy guy. He probably can't like start everything. Oh, I'm just have a good friend that I'm like putting off meetings and stuff for. So just by hanging out with Zubair and Margaret and Kenzie, like all of us just started hanging out all the time. Yeah. Um, we started to be around so often that now um, they're like, what, what do you enjoy doing? Like, what, what can you bring to the table in terms of like, what can yeah, you offer? Like and I'm like, yeah. I've done a ton of video work yeah. and that's something I enjoy. Like I don't enjoy all these other things that like skills that I technically have that I don't want to do a daily. Yeah. So um, they're like, and I'm like, you guys don't really put out that much content. You put out like one or two videos a month. If you're a publicly traded company, like back when I was looking into, if if it was like this really lively, like the, like honestly the TikTok should be used for Facebook stories and Instagram yeah. stories and old Twitter fleets, but like in Instagram reels, like, they should just be putting content out all the time. It's like the coolest product. It's a cool looking, like people love it. I'm like, you guys just need more content. And then I'm like, and I can make content like yeah. quite often. Yeah. So that's kind of how I started doing what I'm okay. currently doing in life was speaking of, I need to post a TikTok tonight. Yeah. Um, and, and it might be light enough out that we can go shoot some more footage. So the next thing is like those big events, like the raceway and stuff. Yeah. I got so much footage right. that I can kind of use it for quite a while. Yeah. But I'm like, man, so like, is the only person at Arkhamoto just talking about weird internal stuff? Do I have to go through Carl to get drone shots because he's the only one with a license? Or do you know of anyone who has a drone license? I think license? we should probably talk about that outside. I want a drone the, shot. It would spice it up no, so see, like, much. Outside of the podcast. No, totally. like, yeah, yeah, we'll talk it's about probably it. probably better to talk and, about I it. mean, when we go over next door and uh, talk to Mark and give him that, and we'd yeah. be like, hey, Mark, can you pay for Karthik to get his drone footage, his drone thing so that he can just take drone shots for me the all thing the time? Is, like, I think, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that after. Talk about yeah, it after it's yeah. like, I don't want to, I don't want to get in trouble for saying anything wrong. Yeah, that's um, the weird yeah. thing is, it's like, as soon as you start like becoming more of a part of it, like you can get in trouble. I'm um, like, that's, I mean, that, that's with any pu publicly traded company though, right? <sighs> it's There's a lot of information that you just can't really oh, just can't yeah. talk about. Well, I mean but. like people pretty publicly know. Yeah. And I'm not, yeah. I'm trying like, yeah. no, let's get really <laughs> deep into like all these aspects of it. But no, yeah. like Kenzie and I are in a position lately, like where we saw um, the quarterly report, not the quarterly reports, but we saw the music video that played at the end. Yeah. Um, a day before and I'm like cool that'll be fun to trade fub tomorrow Mark's like you can't because it's a crime it's insider yeah. trading I'm like plus making it even more appealing to me honestly we could just do like because Kenzie's been starting baking scones and stuff I'm like yeah. she could do the whole Mar Martha Stewart like circle in one day yeah like learning to bake and insider trading all in one and I'm like <laughs> but we didn't obviously we're like okay. we're following the rules enough to like yeah. not do anything illegal and not do yeah. anything that like would ever put good. fub Definitely. in danger yeah, but that's exactly. why I'm like I, I don't really wear like Arkhamoto merch on the show like this isn't like an Arkhamoto show like this is yeah. my show I'm still my own sovereign individual yeah and 
and that's just like my day job's making really fun videos of a fun product which honestly like a lot of people who come on the show like i take them out on it after if possible yeah. and that's the one video that got like twenty five thousand views oh really is me literally dude I spent, because I'm like, okay, how do you make a good, like a TikTok that gets traction? It's like seven seconds because someone rewatches yeah. it, that helps, all these things. I made 60 of them, 80 of them, and no real traction, like a thousand views or whatever. I made one that was a minute and 30 seconds of just like a static, pretty much shot of me like, okay, you gotta unbuckle it, and then you gotta buckle it in, and you do this. It was literally like the most boring, no gimbal, the, no yeah. gimbal like Nothing. literally the laziest video yeah. got the most views by so far, and to the point where I'm like just know, questioning like, everything. Do you know like the of those views? Um, do they tell you that? So here's the interesting thing about Arkimoto's TikTok is it's uh, like a company account, so I can't use any fun music, but it shows yeah, you metrics, me that, but yeah. the metrics aren't data that's really useful so i'm like is this a worth, worthy trade-off for our Komodo to be doing like it with any like it'd be cool if they could switch their account back to non-commercial or something or like allow me to post tiktoks where i can get on trends and like post yeah. like do you use tiktok i actually i used to <laughs> <laughs> getting to a pretty dark part in your life as we all did but like no, four um, hours go by <laughs> yeah no i used it like pretty heavily in 2020 um i have like a Who I have, yeah mm -hmm. that's yeah. true dude. Uh, <laughs> i had like two videos on there you posted um, two videos. Yeah. Nice. Uh, one was I basically recreated. I made like a parody of like this um, like trend that was there was like this Indian song called Bevafa, which is like a, a, like a sad song, I guess. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. So like hella like Indian dudes were making um, uh, like TikToks of it and of them like acting hella sad with the music in the background. So I made a parody for one of those. Yeah. Uh, that got like like a thousand views, I think. Nice. Then I did one where. There's, it's like, it, you do it with the what dog. What kind you do an Indian song of all things? I, I'm Indian. Are you Indian? Yeah. That's nutty. <laughs> I'm kidding. Just like almost at the very end of the show. Yeah. Very cool. Wait, but, do you, so do you actually keep up with like, like enough that you keep up with Indian culture enough that you know when a popular song comes out? Like I've oh, never heard of that uh, song. I, I know no Indian trends on TikTok. Yeah. Like I'm like, that's a fascinating thing that like, just because you're part of that race, like, do you, do you like follow, like, does it give you, the algorithm give you enough information to still like keep up to date on what's going on? Well, I don't use TikTok anymore. I deleted it like smart. seven, eight months ago. Yeah. I just don't have any Not time. smart. Everyone yeah. use TikTok. Follow <laughs> the Arkimoto TikTok. Okay. Yeah. But I, I just don't have like much time anymore. But when I did use it, um, yeah, like I don't really, like, I guess the way it works is based on what you, it just, the algorithm just gives you videos that, like, you would probably want to see more of. Totally. Right? And it, I think it does that based on, like, your watch time and all that stuff. So, I I guess those are, like... So, you just like some Indian TikTok. Yeah, okay, so, so it's Indian not like you, like, TikTok. follow in and they... Like, and the, yeah, the thing is, they're not, like, Indians in India doing this. It's, like, yeah. Indians in the Bay Area kind of... But it's still Indian. Yeah, United no, I totally States, yeah. yeah. But I realized that a long time ago that I'm, like, oh, like, India or also, like, Russia. Like, all these different places have their own, like brad pitt of that country yeah, exactly. and i'm like oh i know nothing about this and then as soon as you said i'm like wait do you know who the brad pitt of india is and all these things but you're this thing you like yeah no i mean uh, no i actually i used to i used to be a big like bollywood fan cool. uh growing up my parents used to take me to like a lot of bollywood movies so yeah. i kind of am in the know of like who's popular who's not cool um same thing with music like i'll Actually, music I'm kind of out of touch with. But. Off air, it'd be cool if you shared one, or even on air, one Bollywood movie that would yeah. be like fun and kind of applicable for someone who's never watched Bollywood, but I kind of have always seen like clips of it on Reddit. I'm like, that seems hilarious. Where they're like really kind of over the top funny, or at least like the violent, like uh, the the. Uh, the I, I don't really okay. There are a lot of different genres, um, okay. and so the ones I used to watch back when I was younger, my parents used to like totally be into like rom coms and stuff. Mm -hmm. So they go I to am all right the, now. Yeah. <laughs> Not Indian rom coms yeah. but or Bollywood rom coms. But yeah, so they would go to like all the like the midnight showings for like every single Bollywood rom com movie that came out in the early two thousands to like the mid two thousands and I'd go with them. That was the prime um, time for rom coms. Yeah. Kenzie and I talk about all the time. They stopped making them. Like yeah. either like Ben Stiller, Owen Wilson, um Matthew McConaughey, like a couple of others, aged out of it, and they stopped making good rom coms. Yeah. Now it's just pure romance with like these weird sad aspects to it. Like there's no more like Along Came Polly or like these things. That I'm like, oh, I just feel good watching it. They're gone. Yeah, They're extinct. I, mean, I don't know. I don't really like rom coms anymore. What do you watch? Uh, I I watch a lot of like documentary type movies and uh, like uh, have you seen the show like Peaky Blinders? On Netflix. Mm, I watched one episode and I'm like, eh, not for me. Like, I, I watch a lot of those type of, like, mafia. Cool. More like, serious yeah. stuff, yeah. yeah. I like, um, Kenzie saw Goodfellas for the first time ever, like, a week ago. Okay. I, brought, I told Mark, and Mark's yeah. like, I don't think I've seen Goodfellas. I'm like, everyone yeah. should see Goodfellas. That's, like, the core-level gangster movie. Yeah, Like, like sure. you know, 
But anyways, I mean, we're we're almost just at the end of an hour. Do you have anything you want to like pitch or like people to follow um, you somewhere? Yeah, to... actually, so uh, on the topic of like UX and stuff, so there's a project that me and my friend in college have been working on. And that's all the time we got here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's called a uh, Cured Ketchup. And essentially the idea behind it is we want to create like a marketplace where artisan bakers, like that Ooh. bake at home, yeah. can get connected with like a community around them of people who would buy from them. And then they can sort of, that's like a transition step from for them from like baking at home to maybe having their own bakery, cool. um, stuff like that. So uh, we created a website called curedketchup.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've I, our first month was like in June. We had about like four uh, different like bakers on there, I guess. That's the right term for it. And we had like close. Wait, so this just happened, June, yeah, like two is, months ago yeah, it started. Yeah. yeah. And are you a baker, or did you just jump uh, on this no, project? No, so I'm not. Like, I'm not a baker. So my who mom. Who brought this into your life? My mom has been running like an ice cream business on the side. Cool. Uh, for about like since I was in high school, um, and she kind of slang and cream. Yeah, pretty much. And, <laughs> and uh, a lot of it um, was done on WhatsApp. Like that seems to be like a huge market for this. Cool. Um, right. Uh, WhatsApp. Any for black market. No. WhatsApp is a really good place for black market ice cream. I mean, yeah. And like, let's make it more above the table. Yeah. We want to make it more above the table, more professional. Yeah. Uh, provide these caterers with a more professional look. Uh, so I can like show you the website after, but cool. it, it really. I'll put a link to it if there's like a, uh, like, is uh, there, like, yeah, a website. Yeah. CuredCatchup.com. Cool. Yeah. We'll put that in the description. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's super. I, I think it's a really big business, and there's actually rules in the U.S. and in India. We had st- we had restaurants or bakers in India and in the U.S. at the time, mm-hmm. um, and we got close to like 400 in sales cool. um, in the first month, which was really fucking cool. Because awesome. I've never like had this is like a more of like a a technology company thing, I guess, mm-hmm. more more than it is like a business, yeah. I guess, right? So. This is, like, the first time I've had, like, some kind of traction, which is kind of cool. It's incredible. Um, But, yeah, and then, so the rule in the United States is that you can bake uh, goods at home and sell for up to, like, 40K in revenue per year, right? Which is a good salary. (laughs) And which, if you look at it in terms of COVID, right, like, people are at home and people know how to do all this, but they just don't have the tools to either make flyers, make a page um, for themselves, and just, like, market it correctly, per se, right? And uh, have, like, a proper professional ordering system. So that's kind of what we created. And, uh, yeah, my mom, she sells ice cream. So, and she's been doing it for a while. So I wanted to do this nice. uh, to kind of help her out. That's awesome. And you then, made an app for your mom and then for Well, it's not people, an app. It's just a website. Or a website. Yeah. <laughs> like, kind of in a way like that. It directly helps your mom. Yeah, pretty much. It was only, it was made for her to sell to, like, her friends in the neighborhood. Cool. And then her friends in the neighborhood also sell stuff. And they're like, hey, can we hop on that too? Yeah. And then I'm like sure why not and then it just made like a bunch of different profiles for them and then yeah nice. very cool man I pre- it's then, funny earlier you're like i just don't have the time like what are you busy doing if you're making money from ethereum like mining ethereum it sounds like you'd have all the free time in the world but i guess you're making uh, a website for people to barter essentially or like like because in a way like well, if it's all not, of your friends also sell yeah, stuff yeah it kind of comes down to like well, why don't we all just trade stuff well i wouldn't say it's like bartering it's more like i really want to provide that transition step for mm. people to go from like a home business or a home bakery to like an actual bakery yeah there's so many people who just don't they either think like i can't do that at home because it's illegal or whatever and i yeah. need a permit i would have thought right? that yeah exactly that's a thought but the rule exists and it's been there for a while and it's cool uh, I just, I really want people to, like, actually be able to achieve, like, their dreams. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't think, like, if you're sitting at home and you have the skill to bake, yeah. you should be given the opportunity to have a bakery. Absolutely. Or, like, whatever you do, ice cream, I don't know, whatever the fuck you're making, right? Like, you should have that opportunity to really, like, take it to the next level. And then... It's awesome. Yeah. So that's kind of my motivation behind it. Cool. I like it. In many ways, I want people's dreams to kind of fail, but kind of succeed. <laughs> that's why I have people on. I'll give them a couple minutes. I don't want to do it at the beginning, so, like, because then it's, like, you know, like, it's, I, but people... Have at the end, like I always try to give people. And do you want people following you on Twitter or uh, straight up I, text you? No, <laughs> no I'm, I'm good with the Twitter. So, cool. Awesome. Uh, all right. Yeah. Thank you very much for the show. Hit the gong and we'll get the fuck out of here. All right. All right. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. This was yeah. uh, this was an absolute blast. Take care, everyone. Peace. <laughs>